Where are the Christians going to be tomorrow morning when there are orphans that they know are going to be afflicted to death? Where are you going to be when the orphans in their affliction desperately need you to visit them when they're going to be massacred? Are you going to be at a conference to talk about the authority of the Bible? Are you going to be at a conference to talk about how the Bible is the authority and how the Bible is reliable? What is the point of doing that if you won't obey the Bible? It's a contradiction. It's a contradiction. Nope. People need to hear the truth, sir. It's not time to turn it down. It's time to turn it up. It's time to wake up. It's time for people to turn away from their hypocrisy. Why did you call the police? You're preaching to the choir here. We well, don't well, know, we're not. Where is the choir at the abortion mills? What are you going to be doing tomorrow okay. morning when they're Please. slaughtering children, sir? Please. What are you going to be doing, okay? Please. On the I'll be schedule, back here in on the schedule says you're going to be church here at 8:30. Okay. 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 So children are being murdered. Children are okay? being mass murdered. Take it, take it back where you get wherever you brought it from. No. I'm asking you to leave. No, it sounds. Children are going to be murdered tomorrow morning. You're not espousing the gospel. You're espousing hate. Hatred is letting children get murdered. No. Children are going to be mass murdered. What is the gospel? Living out the gospel is going to where children are being mass murdered, sir. When they know when it's and to leave before the police get here. No. If you don't leave, the police will take you. Okay? Why? Why would you want police to cause you disturbance? Maybe we should be disturbed when children are being mass murdered six miles from here. I'm talking with you. I'm asking you nicely as a Christian brother. Please. What are you doing for the least of these? We okay. cannot stop. Do what Jesus would do. I we are. Stop, stop doing it. We are. Okay. Put your put your signs away. No, no, They're sir. disgusting. We know. What is disgusting is apathy. We know. When children go, what the okay. what are you doing about it? What are you doing? I'm you stop, Please. No, we're no. gonna preach. I'm gonna preach. Okay. People need to hear it. And, 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 and you sh and you should be at the no, killing facility no, tomorrow morning when they're murdering. My children. wife's an OB nurse, okay? I know what goes on. Okay, why aren't you out there? Okay. Why, why don't you go out Please there tomorrow stop. morning to seek to rescue them from death instead of going inside a building? Why don't you the go and the rescue Bible. them instead of we preaching do. to the choir? We do. We're not preaching to the choir. If you if you have events planned on Saturday morning when they're slaughtering children in this area, and you're going to come six here miles from here, the Bible while children are being murdered, the peace needs to be disturbed. That is, we need to. It's time to disturb the peace. Oh, it's time. No peace with child sacrifice. It's time to wake up, friends. No peace with child sacrifice. Children are going to be mass murdered tomorrow morning. Children are going to be mass murdered. Tomorrow morning, in this area, inside killing facilities, while people go to a conference, look what's happening. What's the point of talking about how the Bible is the authority if you're not going to obey the Bible? What's the point of studying the Bible and reading the Bible? So we're going to do mass murder tomorrow morning, six miles from here, in Death Plains. And people are going to be here at a conference while their neighbors are being mass murdered. Before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Where are the people at this conference going to be tomorrow morning when there are orphans who desperately need to... More Catholics than Christians. It's embarrassing. I go out to the... What's what's the decibel level for the noise? It, that's way too loud. Well, how do you? What's way too loud? You, you have to get a permit from the village if you're going to use a megaphone. Okay. It's not, okay. not going to be a megaphone. No, I can use my natural. Voice what's the what, what, what's the ordinance? Look, Free speech. I, I, I sympathize with you guys. I know you have your camera on. Yep. I'm a born again Christian too. Okay. I'm totally sympa sympathetic with you guys. They need to hear this. They need to see these signs. I get it. I get it. Now you got neighbors across the street who are yelling at you guys, and it's. Yeah, and they won't come over up. and talk to us. Look, people it's need to wake up. Murder tomorrow Dude, morning. I totally get it. Okay. I get it. Okay. But the peace needs they to be destroyed. To not be destroyed. Where? Who? Who's there? The guy across the street shouting at you. Yeah, he won't come over and talk to us. I know. There's, there's but the people here need to be disturbed. They're at peace with child sacrifice. You go to the abortion mills, there's almost nobody out there. I don't think these people, they, they, these people are Christians. Yeah, most Christians, Christians are at peace. Christians ignore mass murder every day. I can, I can say, I've been, I've been going to the abortion mills for years. It's embarrassing how many Christians do not show up. It's embarrassing. It's shameful. And we, and we see it with care. It's like, no, you don't. There's no Christians at the abortion mills. 
Christians don't talk about it. And when you do talk about it, they want to they want to shut you up. When we come to a conference and raise awareness, they want to shut you up. I'm saying that from experience. You're not raising awareness. It's, it's, you're raising your own ignorance. Ignorance. Christians ignorance. Ignorance. talk about it all the time. No, they don't, sir. I, I think we should be no, they don't. Conversation without attitude. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, well, I'd, I'd love to just have a discussion with you. Well, sure. we'll have a discussion. I mean, my my full time ministry is at a, a rescue mission, helping okay. homeless. Okay. okay. You guys are doing your thing. Some of our staff members go to the abortion. Good. They, they do that. That's good. And, and I, I think it's I, what I thought walking to the car is that when you're shouting on that, this guy's mad. Obviously, that's his deal. But you're making an assumption that everybody that's here is not doing what you're doing. You're making an, an and that's not right. You're making an assumption that we don't care and you're also making an assumption that everybody here is from this area it seems like we're not i'm from wisconsin okay people are traveling all across here. all across the country the same people see the same thing wherever they go massive neglect of justice and mercy when they're living in history's most devastating holocaust when their children being murdered left and right all over the place it, like, yeah, we not, see the I'm fruit of the of, we see the fruit of false conversion. We see the fruit of false Christianity everywhere. Well, people I, people go not. to conferences and they talk about the Bible while they they don't obey the Bible. So the, the point, we, the point of the people up. is the authority of the word and living by it. And, and yeah. I, I would say there's there's a lot of people here that are doing that. They may not do the exact same thing you're doing. So if I don't go to the abortion clinic, but I'm trying to take somebody whose life and is ruined and they've ruined their family's lives and change them and transform their lives from sin to sanctify and following Christ, you're, you're saying that what you're doing is better than what I'm doing, that what you're doing is right and what I'm doing is wrong. I'm telling you that you need to practice pure and undefiled religion before God the Father, which is described in the book of James as visiting orphans and widows in their affliction and keeping oneself unstained from the world. I'm telling you there are orphans who desperately need you to visit them in their affliction. You should also think about how would you live your life if born children were being taken into killing facilities in this area and being slaughtered? Would you would you go out there for born children? Would you, would it be an urgent issue for you? Would you be talking about it more if they were born children? Because if you would be living your life differently if they were born children, you're in sin because you're discriminating against people based on their age. You're treating but two you're different people you're saying differently. Because I'm going to the born children in poverty and providing a school to teach them. That's good. Through a homeless shelter. That's good. That there, I think it. I think what we're disagreeing about is the view that Paul has of the body. That there's many parts and they're all doing something different. You're doing your thing, and I'm not going to say it's wrong. I think it's good. I think you're right. I think it's murder. I think I, I agree with you on all those things. I'm doing Doing what I can, I can't. You can't do everything. I can't do everything. Sure. The, the church is big enough that we should all be able to do our parts. Okay. Well, so, so what, how are you using your gifts and talents to address the abortion holocaust? The people who are being targeted by mass murder. These people are the most needy people in the world. Those who are going to be murdered tomorrow morning, six miles from here, are the most needy people in this area, and most Christians are going to ignore them. So we should all use our gifts and talents. We all have different abilities. We have different ways we're things that we're good at, and we should come together and use those together to target different things. And we should give time and resources and energy to each need in our community, like according to the level of need, right? Like we should prioritize the needs of the people who right. are in need around us, right? So, so we're so saying this a is woman, a priority. Yeah, this oh, should be a, it's, a it's, really it's, high priority. Yeah, absolutely. And, For most persons, it is. And we have homeless women and children that come into our shelter, and, and we counsel the women against abortion. Okay. They, That's great. In order to, to be qualified for the women's children's shelter, you have to have children in your custody that are legally right, or you can be expecting. And some of the women who come in who are expecting are definitely thinking or on their way to the abortion clinic, and we counsel and say, no, that is not the right way to do it. We will help you with adoption. We That's will good. help you with anything we can. I would rather see that child born and be in a bad foster care situation and not be born at all. They still sure. have a chance. Yeah. And, and so we do. We, That's we good. Do. You know, and I think there's a lot of ministry that's supporting you on the side. Don't ignore it. Okay. Don't shout that we're all bad. Well, it's we're not, we're not very obviously that. inadequate, right? There, are, there's over, well over forty thousand children that are murdered every single 
here in this state and I don't see people acting with urgency to put an end to that. I see a lot of people spending time doing trivial things that don't matter. They're not prioritizing correctly. They're not acting like they're living in a holocaust. They're, I've been they're, seeing that they're for not 10 even years. talking about it. They can't even post a status on social media about it. Like, that's absurd. They're not living the same way they would if born people were being massacred all over the place. So that's the problem. There's discrimination. There's sin. The sin of, the sin of partiality, which is specifically warned against in the book of James. I've been, and we come here and people talk about the authority of the Bible while they refuse to obey what the Bible says. So we come and we say, hey, if you're going to say the Bible is your authority, you'd better live by it. You'd better obey it. Here are the people who des desperately need your help. So please help them. Please act like you're living in a Holocaust. You know? So I've been saying it for 10 years. Most Christians do not talk about this. And I, not just my own experience, but the experience of others who are older, who've been working to end this Holocaust for decades, say the same thing. Yeah, Christians I, are at the fact they I, don't care. I, I hope you can see, I can appreciate what you're doing and I support you. I may not do the same thing you're doing, but it doesn't mean that I don't think it's a priority. It doesn't. It, it means that I'm doing what I can for the ministry I have. Okay, yeah, and we need to think about what is the most effective methodology and what do these children actually need from us. So right now, we could probably change the culture pretty quickly if thousands of people showed up to the killing facilities tomorrow morning and shut them all down just with the pure number of thousands of people putting their bodies in front of them. We would make national news and people yeah. would be like, whoa, Christians are act actually acting like people are getting murdered. Maybe this is actually murder. And what if we did that week after week, week after week until it stopped? What if we were in the streets constantly exposing this and crying out for justice so that like over time, people would grow up in a, in a society in which Christians were always pointing this out and crying out against mass murder. And then when they grew up in that environment, they'd understand from the get-go, this is murder, this is wrong, and if you support this, you're some kind of bigot. We have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people who profess Christ in this area, and they do not do what is necessary to change the culture, the cultural mindset that is pervasive right now, which accepts this. But we could change the culture if we were a loud voice constantly, but we're not doing that. So we need to think about what methods are we going to use to be a very loud voice on a regular basis to reach millions of people, to reach tons of people on a regular basis, because that's how you change culture. And, and your, your thing of thousands of people going there and some of them going to jail possibly and, sure. and then coming sure. back the next day and coming back the next day, sure. I think that's a, a, a legitimate thing. I don't know if when you change, say methodology, I'm not sure this methodology is working. This has been going on for a long time too, right? Because of the, the Christian sign, silence. The silence, the signs on the street and, and the, the megaphone. <laughs> the people, is, the is people that, do it has been tiny, tiny numbers. Is the methodology changing anything? Well, so, no, because so the number of people doing it is incredibly small.